In this video, we are going to discuss the differences between introverted and extroverted thinking. Thought is the thought of thought, mused James Joyce. His magnum opus, Ulysses, was a brain teaser. It played with the various strange thoughts we have and how we project that into the world around us and the world within us. And different people think about the world or about themselves or about the people around them differently. Joyce himself wrote the book about Dublin when he was away in Italy. He traveled to France as well during that time. Now, does that make him an introvert or an extrovert? Writing is primarily an introverted task, something that consumes a lot of self-reflection. But traveling, as Joyce did, is looked at as an extroverted activity. One of the questions that is often elusive to answer is how introverts think and how their way of thinking is different from the way extroverts think. There is the traditional picture of an extrovert, the one who socializes with consummate ease. And how does this mind think when compared with the conventional portrayal of an introvert who is always at loggerheads with socializing? We'll take a look at that shortly. But before that, we want to say that we make these videos for free. And all we ask in return is a mere like of the video. Besides, subscribing to our channel will also help the cause of making these videos. If you hit the notification button, you will be notified of all the videos we upload. Okay, without any further delay, let's take a look at how introverts think versus how extroverts think. Thinking internally versus thinking externally. All people's thoughts are sometimes driven internally. There are some thoughts that randomly pass. They come and they go. They go and they come back. And they pass away. This is sometimes known as our internal monologue. It is one of the ways writers from Virginia Woolf to James Joyce have portrayed modernism in their novels. While having conversations with other people, we have some sort of an internal master we have conversations with. Say you're talking to a person and you have an itch on your back and a thought pops into your head that says, God, what an ungodly time for a scratch. But you can't say that out loud, can you? It would be a faux pas. Such bouts of interior monologues are no different for an extrovert or an introvert. Everybody has this stream of consciousness that just zips through us. And if you think internally in the aforementioned way, you shouldn't automatically assume that this is something that only introverts do. No one can think out loud all the time, not even the extrovert of all extroverts. But there is some sort of a degree that you can establish that can give you a cue as to how many thoughts are being filtered before they are voiced. And just because introverts might not be comfortable talking more than what they believe is their allotted share, this shouldn't be confused with holding back what they've got. Given the right circumstances and encouragement, introverts might say what they think more than extroverts do. But in what ways can the differences be seen most notably? Internally focused thinking versus externally focused thinking. More often than not, a big marker that separates introverted from extroverted thinking is the direction in which their thoughts take them. For example, an introverted thinker might be more focused on the world of ideas say, getting down to the nitty-gritty of a new scientific concept, or how time might be warped, or what things can be done to have a life that is meaningful. An extroverted thinker, on the other hand, is someone whose thoughts mostly revolve around the things that immediately surround them. For example, a point of consideration might be how to dress spiffily when guests arrive, or if it is in the case of a social worker, he or she might think about how to enrich the lives of the people who live in the remote area they're working in. That being said, this is not at all to say that extroverts don't think about abstract conceptual ideas, or that introverts don't care about bettering the lives of people where they're living. It's just that on average, the introverted thinkers will be more erring on the side of the world of the interior, while the extroverts think more about pleasing other people. Let's take an example of people in the Myers-Briggs personality indicator who have other characteristics that are quite similar but are different only on the basis of extroversion and introversion, such as the INFJ or the introverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging types, 
and the ENFJ, or the extroverted intuitive feeling and judging type. Many research studies point out that the INFJs tend to thrive in artistic or creative jobs, such as in fine arts or as psychologists, whereas ENFJs thrive at jobs which prioritize pushing other people to better themselves, say in jobs that are humanitarian in nature. Which type sounds more like you? Tell us about it in the comments. Visual versus non-visual thinking. Another of the points that clearly demarcate how introverts and extroverts think is the way they become graphic in their thinking. How many introverts do we know who possess a clearer idea of the things that are happening in the abstract world, say in mathematics, without the aid of a visual guide? An extroverted thinker, on the other hand, needs more graphical assists to get a clearer picture of explanations. And that is not at all to say that introverts are smarter than the other lot, nor is it the other way around. This just reveals a different way of learning one has when compared to the other. And this difference in learning style also makes its way through to the differences that are exposed in their workplaces. An extrovert, while presenting work, say a business report, might be more centered on drawing graphs or making tables of the data presented, as they were more attuned to learning that way. On the other hand, an introverted thinker might focus more on the analysis of the presentation, often touching upon the various implications of the results rather than on the way the data is presented. Introverted thinkers can rely more heavily on their memories and might not have a long preparation time for their presentations. Susan Cain, in her wonderful book called Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking, gives numerous examples of how introverted thinkers can be detailed in their analysis and how wonderfully they can rely on their excellent memories in various office settings. Logic and consistency. Both introverted as well as extroverted thinkers are looking for some sense of consistency and logic that drives work forward. The difference boils down to where these two very different types of thinkers are looking for consistency and logic. An introverted thinker is seeking consistency in their own thoughts and patterns. One might say that a person who is on a mission to achieve internal peace often has to go on a journey that takes them through the roads of introversion. Achieving things such as enlightenment is an introverted route where we tend to take a look at the mistakes we've made or the things that we could have done better or what frame of mind gives us the right amount of peace or how to improve upon our society and an introverted thinker is looking to reconcile their internal thought pattern. On the other hand, an extroverted thinker is seeking consistency in the rules outside of them. For example, when a person makes a mistake, an extroverted thinker might intuitively know the mistakes they've made. So an extroverted thinker is more likely to be someone who can spot the inconsistencies in the rules that an office has set up. In the same light, an extroverted thinker is more likely to point out the mistakes in the way an organization is being run. While introverted thinkers might also have an intuitive sense of where things are headed wrong, these people might not voice their opinions as robustly as an extroverted thinker might. Do you always express your opinions in this way? Share your thoughts below. Dominant versus auxiliary thinking. Before we touch upon more points on introverted versus extroverted thinking, we have to make one thing quite clear. There are dominant patterns to the thinking of introverts that go along with the auxiliary modes of their thoughts. For an introverted thinker, extroverted thinking is their auxiliary mode of thinking. An introverted person will be more attuned with an abstract way of thinking. They will feel that this abstract sense of expressing the way they look at the world is something that comes to them more naturally than perhaps seeking logic and consistency in the outside world. For an extrovert though, logic and consistency in their internal thoughts are auxiliary. They are not their go-to thinking functions, and neither is non-visual thinking their cup of tea. It's just that they've got to labor to keep their thinking internally focused. And to go in that direction would be something akin to swimming against the tide. Final expressions. In what ways do these differences in thinking manifest themselves in the long term? Where is an introverted thinker more likely to land in terms of their jobs when compared to an extroverted thinker? 
Chinese philosophers of the past had a wonderful concept of the yin and the yang. These are supposedly two different worldviews that make up the whole. For instance, the color black is totally different from the color white. But aren't these two opposites pointing in the same direction? Could you visualize the color black if there was no whiteness? Or in the absence of black, what would the existence of white be like? Can a person have a front without the back? In the same way, extroverted thinkers and introverted thinkers complement each other. And despite landing in the same professions, they can be quite different. Take the story of World War II, for example. A true introvert, Alan Turing, decoded the signals sent through the Enigma machine. And a set of other cryptographers also worked with him, and most of them were internally focused and found the flaws in the way that the ciphering machines around that time worked. On the other hand, the chief military operators who were responsible for disseminating the deciphered messages from Alan Turing and his team were thinking extrovertedly and looking for inconsistencies in the ways their enemies were thinking. And only through looking at the loopholes in the way enemies march their troops around could they be defeated. Most bosses and CEOs tend to be on the extroverted scale of thinking. But it is only through a wonderful symbiosis of the introverted thinkers and the extroverted ones that we can get the whole organization running smoothly. One cannot simply have a bunch of people who are way too internally focused. Nor can we decently run things if we have a rich preponderance of externally focused thinking. So all in all, introverted thinkers are not simply people that have a thick volume of internal monologues going inside their heads. Rather, they are people whose thinking tends to become more abstract, seeking logic and consistency in their own thought patterns, and do possess an auxiliary thinking function of the extroverts. On the opposite end of the spectrum, extroverts are more focused on what the people think about them, or finding faults in the thought patterns of other people, and tend to be much more visual, not simply in their thinking, but also in the way they express themselves. If you enjoyed our presentation on the differences between the way extroverts think and how introverts think, please do leave us a comment and let us know if we've missed something. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. Meanwhile, you can watch the video on your screen.